But I have always been an opinionated person. It's just that people never knew about it because it was considered a taboo to talk about politics. The people are being just taken for ride who are Hindus and the Hindu beliefs. And I just said, and it went out of proportion. They started trolling me. And I said, if they're trolling me, I'm not somebody who's going to take it lying down. I will talk more. I started talking about Kerala floods because I realized that people were very much affected by it. I was also affected by it as an Indian, but I was just putting forth my opinion as a Hindu Indian that you guys should not make fun of beliefs which are associated with Sanatan Dharam, that is worshipping a cow. Because we worship it. It's our belief. We are not forcing you to you know, have that belief. But making a public spectacle by slaughtering cow in Kerala just for vote banking politics is wrong. So I just expressed a fact which was happening in the Indian circuit, Indian political circuit down in Kerala. And people started trolling me. And I realized that this is something that I'll not take it lying down because it is not a figmentation of my mind. It is a part of my dharma. And I know I'm correct. In my heart, I know I'm correct. People who belong to my religion also know I'm correct. But if they want to play the double standard game, it is their karma. I won't do that. A lot of Hindus keep quiet about Hindu related matters. You have a lot of Hindus even in Bollywood. You have a lot of Hindus in the journalist uh, as journalists in India. You have not a lot of Hindus as a feminists in India. And these people, they actually sell their own religion to make work for themselves. That is the irony. And that is something which is very sad because they are just thinking about earning two bucks, you know, or the future of their children. But they are actually spoiling the future of their children because they are degrading the religion in which they are born. That is something which is so shocking because I'm not talking about the people of other religion. People of other religion are doctrined with their own thought process, their own religious ideologies. What is shocking is people who make fun of their own religion. Like you have actors making fun of the fact that we should not making fun, uh, advising that one should not, you know, burst crackers. I understand because it's Diwali. They say it's air pollution. But the, the same actors will burst crackers in their wedding and anniversary. So what happens to the pollution then? So that double standards is sad. And that is done mostly by Hindu actors. I am not saying you degrade any other religion. That is not my thought process. I will not degrade a religion that I don't know of. But why should I be ashamed of being a Hindu? That thought process is wrong. And that is why now that I've understood that making fun of Hinduism, making fun of your own religion is supposed to be the ticket to be called secular, then I don't want to be secular. Because a Hindu doesn't need to be secular. Hindu is born secular. People of other religion need to be secular because they are the ones in this number game. Do you understand? You have so many countries which are Islamic. You have so many countries which are Christian, you know, as country religion. You don't even have one country which has Hinduism or Sanatan Dharam as a country religion. We don't even have one country. So we were never in the number game and we are the oldest religion. Yet we are made to feel ashamed for being us by our own people. So that thought process is something which affected me. And I am obviously doing this, not being paid by anybody. You know, I'm not on anybody's payroll. I am doing it because at the end of the day, I feel happy with my own conscience. Secular in India means only a Hindu is supposed to be secular and a Hindu is supposed to not be proud of being a Hindu. That is what secularism means in India. It's not a kind of attached to people of other religions. You have, uh, you have people who follow Islam. You have people who follow Christianity. You have people who follow Zoroastrianism in India. You have people who follow Sikhism. And everybody is very much, you know, stuck with their rituals. Like you have uh, Muslims, they pray on Friday. You have Christians, they go to church on Sunday. 
Hindus are very chilled out. We don't have a day. We don't do any of these things. We just fight among ourselves. We are just trying to get the trophy that our caste is better than your caste. You know, and that is what has led to our downfall. A Rajput will say, I am better than, you know, uh, a person from Bihar. Or a Bihar will say, I am, you know, it's a very weird cycle. And this is what people from other religions use against us to divide us in terms of casteism, in terms of regional, you know, language and barrier. Like South India will say Tamil is better than Hindi and people in North India will say Hindi is better than, you know, Tamil. So this is something which is killing us. The divisions that are forming within Sanatan Dharam because of different languages, because of different gods that we worship, because we have got lots of gods that we worship. We have we have uh, Durga Ma's festival, which is very strongly worshipped in Calcutta because it's Bengal, you know, it's a, that dominated area. You have Navratri, which is very strongly dominated in Gujarat area, the Maharashtra belt. Then you have a lot of festivals like Karva Chauth, which people say is North India. It's not South India. So we have a lot of festivals which and a lot of gods and a lot of different thought process. But we should all come together as Sanatan Dharam. Otherwise, we'll be finished. I think there was a time uh, when we were there in Iran. And I think there was a time when we were there in Indonesia. And there is a time now that Iran is an Islamic country and Indonesia is an Islamic country. And I just read somewhere uh, in a third portal, third outlet platform, that a woman was caned savagely because she had sex outside of marriage in Indonesia under Sharia law. So it is very sad that Hindus in the disguise of being secular are losing their identity and because of them, the future generations are being, you know, uh, uh, are going to have nowhere to go because we all know about the Kashmiri Pandits genocide and that happened now, like 40, 50 years back. We know what's happening in Bengal. Bengal is a place where there is a lot of atrocities happening on Hindus. So I think Hindus need to get out from this Meh Rajput, Ne Meh Gujarati, Ne Meh this, Ne Meh that. They need to come together as Sanatan Dharam, otherwise it'll be finished. Because in Afghanistan also we were there. There was Chola dynasty in Afghanistan lots of years back. So we have been pushed uh, due to Islamic invasion, due to Christianity influence, and we have been, you know, limited to India. And in India also now we are being pushed. So if we still don't realize it, then obviously we'll be finished. We'll be either converted or we'll be finished. And that is why I make my effort. I am not knowing what my effort is going to do to people who hear me out. Either they're going to get influenced or they're just going to hear from one year and remove from the another year. But I'm doing my bit. Do you understand? I'm a working woman too. I also have to juggle between a lot of things like family, personal work, work commitments, and trying to do this bit, which I try to do as my way of giving back to the society. A lot of people try to say that you should come down on the roads and, you know, be an activist. I can't do that right now. Do you understand? I cannot do that. I try to do what I can do in my capacity without you know, affecting my schedule. But people don't appreciate that also. So that is something which you need to kind of get used to. But you need to do what you think you need to do for your conscience. Hindutva is Hindu ka tattva. Like astitva. Asti ka astat, astitva. But if someone dies, jata hai, anybody dies, uski jo asti hoti hai, uska jo basic hota hai, tattva. So hindutva means the essence of being a Hindu. Now hindutva is a plural word. It is not a singular word. The hindutva ideology means the essence of being a Hindu, Sikh, Vaishnav, uh, maybe Parsi, all religions which were apparently on this side of Hind river, apparently. That is what we have been figuring out from whatever we have been reading. So Hindutva ideology means Vasudeva Kutumbakam, means the entire world is the family. And that is a 
action which one can see because in india all religions flourish you will not say that only this religion is flourishing because our minorities have flourished from 1947 to 2019 which is not the case in the islamic pakistan or islamic bangladesh which were a part of bharat before the partition so hindutva ideology is comprising of all the religions except i believe islam and christianity because these religions originated from middle east and they obviously got spread by their invaders or missionaries over the years but their places of worship are in middle east like mecca medina is in middle east christianity the pop the church everything is that side nothing originated in bharat so hindutva ideology is all these religions together and that is what i believe is sanatan dharma they try to make it as an islamist ideology they try to make hindutva as islamist because they want to say that it is a bad ideology but they are goofing up in itself because islamist is a singular you know pronunciation islamist is more like feminist is more like it's on a singular tone hindutva is more on a plural tone because we have an amalgamation of lot of religion lot of punts they call that as punts like the sikh punt the hindu punt uh the vaishnav punt the shaivism punt so all these punts together they form an amalgamation called as hindutva islamist is singular tone only the followers who believe that there is no other god except allah that is their thought process but here we are having people of various punts having various gods like six worship the guru ji you have uh, shaivism people worshiping bhagwan shiv you have bhagwan ram's followers you have bhagwan krishna's followers parsis worship fire so here there is plurality here there is singularity they compare the rituals in hinduism or you know a lot of punts that form of a part of sanatan dharma as regressive which is very shocking because in our dharma you have goddesses as gods you know and goddesses are a female version to all the people in the, in no other religion you have female being worshiped so people still want to make us regressive and we hindus have always been self critical we have abolished sati we abolished child marriages but you have countries like bangladesh where child marriage is still prevalent and people don't want to accept the regressiveness in other religions who belong to those religions but hindus sikhs uh you know people who are jains we have been very open to self criticism and changed and evolved ourselves over a period of years i would say that sati which was a part that was a part of our history also became also came into our religion or became a part of our religion due to mogul invasion it was never something which was taught in our scriptures goddesses were worshiped women were considered powerful lord goddess parvati is considered to be somebody who could you know who had so much of power you have maa durga who's worshiped for 9 days in navratri you have various forms of goddesses you have sita ma which is bhagwan ram's wife which is who is shown to be somebody who was strong yet having an independent mind to follow her husband to the jungle so we have various storyboards of actual goddesses who are worshiped yet they want to say we are regressive that is the west or people of following islam or whatever which is very sad because we obviously have removed the traditions which came into our lives due to mogul invasion or whatever but there are a lot of things that are still a part of lot of other religions and that needs to be worked on because in iran women are not allowed to even go and watch a football match and they get arrested for that in iran women are not allowed to dance on roads they are supposed to wear a hijab only so all this is so shocking after all this is the same country this is the same world that we all are a part of and we as women should fight for women of all the countries who are 
you know, experiencing such regressive thought process. But we don't. We just want to look at things that we want to look. And that is what the feminists in India do. There is very selective, selective vocalism among the female Bollywood celebrities also. A lot of them don't talk if the rapist is a Muslim. They will not talk. But they will talk if a rapist is a Hindu. So there is a lot of selective outrage that happens in India because of the religion politics, which is very, very sad because after all, whoever is the rapist, he is a bad person and he needs to go behind the bar. But because these women who are obviously in a much more powerful position also professionally and in terms of respect, they choose to voice their opinions only if the rapist belongs to a certain religion shows their hypocrisy but now because of social media everybody is getting exposed because everybody is pointing out their hypocrisy and it is high time we do that because there was an incident where a small girl was raped in Kathua and a lot of outrage happened from Bollywood but there was another girl a three year old girl called as Twinkle Sharma who was raped in uh, UP but the same outrage didn't happen in Bollywood. So Bollywood outrage is very selective, even by the feminists of Bollywood. I think it's not a hidden fact, but everybody feels uh, and everybody knows that Bollywood has a lot of influence from people who follow Islam. And they think that if they voice their dissent over certain practices which are prevalent probably in that religion then their work will get affected we have three indian muslim superstars Shah Rukh khan salman khan amir khan who have been having fan following and a box office run for like three decades and these women probably just want to think that if they don't talk about the regressive practices in a certain religion that they might get work from the people from that religion now that is something which is very sad because work and uh, this thought process of kind of doing something good for the society should not be connected but it is connected in bollywood and that is something which is taking the hindus down So that is why I, with my fiance, my fiance is a wrestler. He is um, a jat and he is a headstrong person who kind of uh, fights with me and I fight with him. But uh, we have been together for like eight years now. So we have started a production house. We have started a foundation. We have done few matches for wrestlers where I'm the director. So I don't want to ask work. I want to give work. So I am from a different thought process. How will my work get affected when I am giving work to a lot of newcomers and a lot of people? So my thought process is we are already dealing with nepotism. We have star kids getting their easy tickets to their first two, three, four films. We have the casting couch. We have a lot of other things happening, you know, criticizing your own religion so that you can get work. I don't want to get into that rat race. I want to do something which is created by me. So we have a production house. We just did one series for DD Do Darshan where Sangram was hosting it. I was the director. So slowly and steadily, we're trying to expand. And hopefully, if God, Yani Bhagwan wishes, I don't think we need to beg to work, beg for work to any human being. We need to talk directly to our God. And it's between us and the God. ki raksha karo. So that's my thought process. We have just started shooting for a series which is on, uh, which is a little bit on a fact of a today's woman who's divorced, trying to, you know, uh, bring up her daughter. I've just started shooting for it under my production house. And now I am obviously looking for film projects where I am playing powerful roles i have done a lot of glamorous roles and my haters or people who want to pull the string 
give me offers of those glamorous roles which does nothing to my sensibility so i need roles which give me the you know kick to get out and go on the shooting set so i am okay if something comes my way from a third party otherwise i am in a position to generate work for myself in you know social media platforms let's start with some series on youtube and then slowly build it from there because apparently i am somebody who is now politically active on youtube and those facebook and all that stuff so going slowly and steadily but i am a strong hindu woman i never play victim i am not somebody who is going to say oh my god mere sath kya hua no i chose this i will stick to it and i will see the repercussions of it i have started hearing a lot of mantras and that is something which has happened post my political view scenario i hear the mahamrityunjay jap i hear hanuman chalisa i hear gayatri mantra i uh, hear the om ka jap whenever i'm doing my yoga so when i hear all these i hear the shiv ji ka shiv strotam these are things which i knew existed but i never kind of touched base with it because i wanted to be the secular hindu who is obviously not into mantras and all that but now i want to touch base with my faith i try to understand the history of every festival slowly and steadily like navratri went by i tried to understand what information i could get on durga maas you know nine avatars and what did the nine avatars mean and i made a video on that that video was not very viral because indians don't want to know about their own dharma <laughs> the videos where i'm angry on some actress or angry on some politician that gets viral in india but i am slowly and steadily trying to connect with my faith like diwali is around the corner i am going to have a pandit ji come over and we are going to do diwali puja if he doesn't come in then we will have the aarti download from google and play it and you know understand the various steps to do the diwali puja so i like all these things like ganpati ji's festival went by we have put a eco friendly ganpati ji in our house we called the pujari and uh, half of the time i realized that the pujaris themselves are not very equipped with knowledge it's just like you know thing is just being misled but now because of social media information being available we all kind of google search and figure out the exact mantras for visarjan for sthapana for daily puja of ganesh ji so life becomes easier but connection of with faith is happening like this way